Assalamu alaikum, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and I welcome you on the 20th session of our course on Organization Theory and Design and today we are going to discuss and we are going to talk about an important issue in the story of Organizational Theory and Design and that topic is the size of organization. Now we have structural or contextual variables and as you remember the structural variables of formalization, specialization, centralization, hierarchy we have talked about. We understand what is mechanistic design, we understand what is organic design. We have talked about structures and then we also discussed some contextual variables like environment. We talked about environment, we discussed environmental uncertainty. We talked about technology, we discussed the impact of technology on organizational design and uh, now we are going to talk about another of the contextual variable which is organizational size. Now before we discuss the various uh, implications of size on the design and on the structure of an organization, first of all there are a few notions about this concept of size which I would like to talk about in detail. Size of an organization, uh, again if you look at the current scenario of globalization and if we look around us, we will see that companies are actually getting smaller because of the technology, because of the reach of technology, because of various people across the world connecting together. Obvious the message is that organizational size is decreasing as compared to what it was in 60s and 70s and 80s, even in 90s, it is decreasing. But still, when one of the industry facts we look at what we teach people. We look at how the MBAs, especially the people who are taught management, unko ekam baut hi zyada concept which is, which every MBA student is familiar with is the concept of BCG matrix. BCG matrix mein aapko pata hai, we take two variables basically. One is the market share of a company and the other is market growth rate of that particular or those particular products. So first, you know that the BCG matrix is used use hota hai when we are comparing the product portfolios. Or suppose, we are a group of companies ko compare kar rahe. and we have four companies in this particular industries, a company A, B, C and D. Or we are doing comparison kar rahe hai on this matrix which has market share on one side, ye low hai market share, ye high hai and market growth rate, ye low hai, ye high. And we have this famous situation, jo BCG matrix ko use karne wale tamam log jante hain. Agar, for example, company A is here, company C is here, D is here and B is here. Ab company A ka market share is high, but its growth rate is low. Ab jab market share zyada hai aur growth rate kam hai, to aap ko maroom hai, situation mein hum isse kahenge cash cow. A company A will become a cash cow. Company B on the other hand has a low market share and a low growth rate, so it is what is called as a dog. And company D has a high market share and a high growth rate, so this is a star and company C has a small market share but has a future potential because future expected growth rate is high, so this is a question mark because it can be converted into a star and if this growth rate does not materialize then it will probably become a dog. Now, with this in mind, now this was important because this is how product portfolio management and how the industrial, uh, looking at industrial structure and looking at your 
own company's product portfolio is taught to business students. Yahan par jo point which I am trying to make is dog hum kise keh rahe Dog hum us company ko keh rahe hain jiska market share kam hai. Market share kam hai ka matlab hai jiska size chota. So we are encouraging naturally the, this sort of education or this emphasis on market share you know puts in the mind of the people that size is important kyunki agar market share zyada hoga to phir ya to hum star honge aur ya agar star nahi bhi hai to cash cow to honge and cash cow means a company or a product portfolio or a product from which you can take a lot of cash kyunki abhi wo cash aapko de raha hai theek hai future mein nahi dega but it is giving you right now so size se ya to aap cash cow hain ya aap star hain so that means there is a bias towards growth there is a pressure for growth and this is despite the fact that in 1990s the famous management guru peter drucker he declared that fortune 500 is over the fortune 500 companies aap jante hain wo companies hain jo highest performer companies hain top 500 and most of them are big companies so peter drucker ne जब 1990s में फोर सी किया द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ ग्लोबलाइजेशन ऑन द साइज ऑफ द कंपनीज एंड ऑन द इंडस्ट्री ही डिक्लेयर दैट फॉर्चून 500 इज ओवर व्हिच मींस द प्रेशर फॉर ग्रोथ और प्रेशर फॉर बिगनेस इज ओवर मे बी प्रेशर फॉर बिगनेस तक तो बात उनकी बनती कुछ नजर आती है बट एज फार एज प्रेशर फॉर ग्रोथ इज कंसर्न दैट इज नॉट ओवर एंड दैट when a company is formed it is natural for that company to grow ye to natural hai na jab aap ek business banate hain to aapke zehen mein kya hota hai that you want to grow one month down the road three years down the road 10 years down the road you want to grow so in spite of this declaration of peter drucker america mein agar hum dekhe to every business person has the dream to take his or her company to the fortune 500 list which means in short to grow and to grow fast and to grow large because without growing quickly and without growing large it it is not possible to become a member of fortune 500 list jo ke most of the entrepreneurs in america have the dream that their company is taken to fortune 500 which means they are after growth which means they are after size sometimes this pressure for growth or this goal of becoming large becomes even more important than profitability aap grow karna cha rahe hain you want your presence everywhere regardless of the fact that your profitability is declining but you are happy that your market share is increasing isme it is one one reason for this is that it is natural that when we are large we feel secure and second thing is that in 70s and in 80s when michael porter came up with his analysis of industrial structure and his analysis of positioning of your company in the industry according to your competitive advantage of either a low cost leader or a company which differentiates to so yahan par bhi jo size hai wo mostly जो जो ये कंपनीज जो जेनेरिक स्ट्रेटजीज अडॉप्ट कर रही हैं या करती हैं वो मोस्टली कौन सी कंपनीज हैं कंपनीज विच आर लार्ज कंपनी स्मॉल कंपनीज विल इट विल बी वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर देम टू पिक अप ए जेनेरिक स्ट्रेटजी एंड देन स्टिक टू दैट स्ट्रेटजी ऑफ अ लो कॉस्ट लीडर और अ डिफ्रेंशिएटर क्योंकि स्मॉल कंपनीज का एनवायरमेंट टर्बुलेंट होता है स्मॉल कंपनीज का एनवायरमेंट इतना स्टेबल और इतना सुकून नहीं होता जितना लार्ज एस्टैब्लिश कंपनीज हैव देर फोर इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर स्मॉल कंपनीज टू हैव दिस मेंटेलिटी बट इफ द स्मॉल कंपनीज आर फ्यूल्ड बाय दिस पैशन ऑफ ग्रोइंग लार्ज देन देयर एम इज नॉट रियली शिफ्ट फ्रॉम रियली सर्विंग देयर कस्टमर्स and there is a trade off 
between really serving your customers or growing. So, wo business will take the path which takes them towards growth. Chahe wo price cutting se market share bane, chahe wo advertisement se bane, jis tere bhi demands par ho, demand create ho, companies will go for. Aur isme phir dusre tarike bhi hain, mergers hain, acquisitions hain, which will make you even bigger. Aap, you are already big and then you acquire a company. You grow further big. Aur 1997 mein, 1.6 trillion dollars worth of mergers took place worldwide. 1.6, aaj ke jo figures hain, wo shayad zyada hain se. Lekin 1997 pe agar hum dekhen, 1.6 trillion ke mergers huye, and a new era of bigness actually started. Aur is mein bigness ki race kyun thi? It was to control the resources or control the distribution channels. Many in the industry believe that firms must grow to stay economically healthy. Or general jo industrial belief hai, wo ye hai, especially production companies mein, that to stop growing a means to stagnate. Stop growing means that you are no more active and no more vibrant. Or ye hum already jo bias for growth create kiya hua hai, jo ke natural reasons se bhi hai, jo ke hum jo padhate hai students ko, jis tere ke tax designs hai, jo consultants hume baate sunate hai, industry mein jo trainings di jati hai, in sab se ye pressure for growth or this bias for growth increases. Ye kam nahi hota hai, badhata hai. Or stability ko jab dekha jata hai. Stability means you are not growing. Aapki sales, for example, your market share over the last two years is not growing. It is stable. Isko bhi danger sign samjha jata hai. To be stable means that customers have not got their demands fulfilled. Ye kaha jata hai, customers agar aap customers ki demand ko absolutely delightfully fulfill kar rahe ho, then the demand of your product should be growing not getting stagnant. And secondly, if you are stable, if you are not growing, it is considered that competitors will increase their market share at your expense. Because the primary demand, hai, primary pie, hai, wo to itni hai. Usme se aapne pie leni di, to dusre le jayenge. So this is the competitive, competitiveness in business, which further spurs this pressure for growth, which further fuels this pressure for growth. So growth Bigness ki taraf jo, jo hume lagta tha craze will, is finishing in 1950s and 60s. When many big companies became white elephants and they started losing money because of their huge size. Kyunki us wakat 60s mein, 50s mein, IT ka daur nahi tha. So when companies grew, they grew too big and they could not come very close to their customers because the reach and the tools and the facilities which are available today, which can bring us very close to customers were not available in those days. But when these tools became available, then that bigness ke against a move was going in the 60s, mein, 70s, mein, when people, the companies realized that too big perhaps, growing too big is itself a problem. Now there are tools that have come from which still there is pressure for growth, still there is pressure for growing large. If we consider large versus small in terms of size, so dusra question phir hai, all right, growth is good, for example. Or if growth is the ultimate objective of the business, how much to grow and how large to become? Kitna bada aap apni company ko karna chahenge aur kya size company ka hona chahi? Is pe pehle to hum ye cheez dekhte hai. Growth ke ya big size ke Ek to psychological advantage. It gives you security. It gives you comfort. It gives you market share. Or market share is an in term. Ye bhi, dekhe, jitni bhi cheeze hum management mein discuss karte hain, market share pe, jis, jis tere humne baat kar rahe hain, market share, mostly companies ye kehti hain, ki humara objective ye hai, ki humara market share badhata rahe. Both si companies ki strategy is lines pe hai, that we are, we have a growth strategy and we want to increase our market share. Now, if you look at it from another angle, you will realize that market share is not a strategy in fact. Market share is a reward of a good strategy. 
देखिए अगर आप कस्टमर्स को डिलाइट कर रहे हैं खुश कर रहे हैं कस्टमर्स की डिमांड पूरी कर रहे हैं कस्टमाइज प्रोडक्ट है आपका फॉर एग्जाम्पल ये चाहे लो कॉस्ट लीडर भी है स्टैंडर्डाइज प्रोडक्ट भी है लेकिन कस्टमर की ख्वाहिश और चाहत के एन मुताबिक और दे आर वेरी हैप्पी विद यू देन नेचुरली आपका जो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन का साइज है वो बढ़ेगा यू विल ग्रो एंड एक तो फायदा आपको ठीक है मार्केट शेयर आपका बढ़ता रहेगा लेकिन वो मार्केट शेयर आपका बढ़ना जो है वो तो रिजल्ट हुआ आपके अच्छा काम करने के ना कि इस चीज को परस्यू करने के कि मेरा मार्केट शेयर बढ़ जाए ये तो बिल्कुल वैसे ही है जैसे आप ये स्ट्रेटजी बना लें दैट माय स्ट्रेटजी इज दैट आई वांट टू मेक प्रॉफिट प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी कोई खुद से स्ट्रैटेजी तो नहीं है प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी इज एन बाय प्रोडक्ट ऑफ स्ट्रैटेजी इज ए रिजल्ट ऑफ स्ट्रैटेजी इज ए रिवॉर्ड ऑफ स्ट्रैटेजी तो जो मार्केट शेयर को स्ट्रेटजी बना लिया जाता है इट इज अगेन बिकॉज ऑफ द मिसकनसेप्शन अबाउट बिगनेस एंड साइज विच आर प्रेवलेंट इन द इंडस्ट्री बिकॉज ऑफ द इंडस्ट्रियल ग्रूस एक तरफ तो हमने पीटर ड्रकर का आपको कॉमेंट सुनाया जिन्होंने नाइनटीन नाइनटीज में ये कहा कि फॉर्चून फाइव हंड्रेड विल बी ओवर और इज ओवर तो दूसरी तरफ माइकल पोर्टर की हमने बात की और माइकल पोर्टर की बुक कंपेटिव स्ट्रेटजी और उसके नतीजे में सामने आने वाला मैनेजमेंट लिटरेचर स्पेशली दी लिटरेचर ऑन स्ट्रेटेजिक मैनेजमेंट ओपन अप अ न्यू स्कूल ऑफ स्ट्रेटेजी मेकिंग विच इज पोजिशनिंग स्कूल ऑफ स्ट्रेटेजी मेकिंग विच गिव्स टू जेनेरिक स्ट्रेटेजीज लो कॉस्ट लीडरशिप डिफ्रेंसिएशन तो इस स्कूल ने जिसने एटीज में अपनी जगह बनाई इंडस्ट्री में इसने इंकरेज किया बहुत से कंसल्टेंट्स को टू जम्प इन दैट स्ट्रेटेजी बुटीक्स छोटे छोटे स्ट्रेटेजी बुटीक्स बन गए वी आर कंसल्टेंट्स एंड वी गिव यू स्ट्रैटेजी वो कंसल्टेंट करते क्या थे अभी क्या करते हैं दे डू एक्सटेंसिव एनालिसिस अबाउट द डेटा ऑफ योर कंपनी और उसकी बेस पे अपने एनालिसिस की बेस पे दे गिव यू वन ऑफ द टू जेनेरिक स्ट्रैटेजीज ऑफ कॉस्ट लीडरशिप और डिफ्रेंसिएशन सो ये स्ट्रैटेजी बुटीक्स ने भी मार्केट शेयर बी सी जी मेट्रिक्स प्रॉफिट इम्पैक्ट ऑफ मार्केटिंग स्ट्रैटेजीज इन सारे कॉन्सेप्ट को बहुत यूज किया उससे फिर बायस टूअर्ड्स ग्रोथ बायस टूअर्ड्स बिगनेस कायम रहा सो वॉट आर दी रियल एडवांटेजेस ऑफ ग्रोइंग लार्ज इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सी इन दैट वे एक तो साइकोलॉजिकल है ठीक है मार्केट शेयर है साइज है रीच है कंट्रोल है अदर रियल एडवांटेजेस ऑफ ग्रोइंग लार्ज नंबर वन इज इकोनॉमीज ऑफ स्केल और ये हम बींग मैनेजमेंट स्टूडेंट्स वी अंडरस्टैंड दैट इफ वी आर लार्ज देन we have the advantage of mass production then if we have the advantage of mass production then we can decrease our fixed costs in fact fixed costs to decrease hongi hi uske sath sath hamari unit cost bhi decrease hoti jayegi aapki fixed cost to wahi rehni aap production ke jab volume badhate hain aapki jo unit cost of production hai wo kam honi shuru ho jayegi and that is what is called economies of scale and it economies of scale is an advantage which is only available to large organizations and those large organizations which are producing mass mass production hai jahan standardized production hai or standardized production you know is not possible without a large size you cannot have economies of scale if you are using mass production एंड योर साइज इज स्मॉल तो आप मैस प्रोडक्शन में तो नहीं जा सकेंगे उसके लिए आपको बड़ा होना पड़ेगा उसके लिए आपके पास मशीनरी प्लांट इक्विपमेंट वर्क फोर्स लेबर फोर्स इसका साइज बड़ा होगा तो फिर आप स्टैंडर्डाइज प्रोडक्ट प्रोड्यूस करेंगे क्योंकि असेंबली लाइन की कंपनीज या कंटिन्यूस प्रोडक्शन जहाँ चल रही है मोस्टली दोज कंपनीज आर बिग कंपनी दे आर नॉट लाइक स्मॉल बैच प्रोडक्शन कंपनीज विच आर स्मॉल तो एक एडवांटेज तो प्योरली प्रोडक्शन की टेक्नोलॉजी और प्रोडक्शन की टेक्निक के बेस पे है आपकी जो हमने इंडस्ट्रियल रेवोल्यूशन में भी डिस्कस किया था तो जैसे जहां से इंडस्ट्री ने रियली रेवोल्यूशनाइज कर दिया था दुनिया को वो इकोनॉमीज ऑफ स्केल के कॉन्सेप्ट से ही किया था इसमें टाइम भी कम लगता है इसमें कॉस्ट भी कम हो जाती है आपके कंपेटिटर जो चीज आपसे महंगी मार्केट में लेके आते हैं आप उनसे पहले उससे बेहतर सस्ती चीज प्रोडक्ट मार्केट में ले आते हैं नेचुरली आपकी डिमांड बढ़ती है 
आपका मार्केट शेयर बढ़ता है द सेकेंड एडवांटेज ऑफ बींग लार्ज टूडे इज दैट इफ यू आर लार्ज देन यू कैन हैव ग्लोबल प्रेजेंस देन यू हैव ग्लोबल रीच नॉट प्योरली इन टर्म्स ऑफ आई टी क्योंकि आई टी की बेस पर हमने देखा था आपको याद होगा आई एम श्योर यू रिमेंबर इन लेक्चर नंबर एटीन वी टॉक अबाउट नेटवर्क ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल स्ट्रक्चर जहाँ हमने देखा था कि एक छोटा सा हेडक्वार्टर आप अपने पास रखें बाकी चीज़ों को मार्केटिंग को प्रोक्योरमेंट को एच आर को आप सब कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कर दें और वो छोटा सा हेडक्वार्टर है वो आपको इतनी एबिलिटी दे देगा कि आप ग्लोबल बन जाए दैट इज फाइन बट दैट इज पॉसिबल टूडे बट mostly companies which become big in production they 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 don't become big on the basis of it it unki main weapon bhi nahi so wo jo production houses big bante hain unko real advantage ye hota hai that when they become big they start and they acquisition or mergers wo karte hain globally to unki reach bad jati hai kis tarah because they start owning their distribution channels तो डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन चैनल्स और इम्पॉर्टेंट कस्टमर मार्केट्स में जब वो एंटर होते हैं ग्लोबली तो बड़ी कंपनीज ही एंटर होते हैं अब एक बहुत बड़ी कंपनी है जो फॉर एग्जांपल फास्ट फूड चेन है कोई तो फास्ट फूड चेन इतनी बड़ी बनने का एडवांटेज आज या दस साल पहले से उनको होना शुरू हुआ वेन दे स्टार्टेड एंटरिंग इन कंट्रीज लाइक आर्स अंडर डेवलप कंट्रीज में भी वो आना शुरू हो गए बिकॉज ऑफ देयर साइज बहुत सी छोटी छोटी कंपनीज हैं विच आर इन द सेम बिजनेस बट दे आर सर्विंग लोकली बिकॉज ऑफ देयर साइज दे आर लिमिटेड लोकली बट देर आर अदर कंपनीज जो रीच अपनी ग्लोबल कर चुकी जो अपनी ब्रांड एक्विटी को ग्लोबलाइज कर चुकी और डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन चैनल्स को और अपने टारगेट सेगमेंट को उन्होंने ग्लोबल बना दिया तो ये भी एक लार्ज या बड़ा होने का एडवांटेज इसके अलावा Large companies will have one more characteristic, and that is their vertical hierarchy. And we know what is vertical hierarchy. We know that the resulting design from a vertical hierarchy will be a mechanistic design. So, ये भी हमें large companies के बारे में information मिली, knowledge मिली. The large companies will have a vertical hierarchy with mechanistic design. And the obviously because of the big size and because of the vertical hierarchy. the organizational systems and the organizational arrangements will be much more complex it will they will not be simple balki complex hong aur in companies ke ird gird ka environment kaisa hoga we can understand that a company which has grown big will have a stable environment okay jab aap company choti hoti hai launch ki hai to obviously environment is turbulent environment is not stable but as it starts growing apni niche se wo निकल के एक इंडस्ट्रियल सेक्टर बना लेती है बैरियर्स टू एंट्री क्रिएट कर देती है बारगेनिंग पावर ऑफ सप्लायर्स और बायर्स को बैलेंस आउट कर लेती है अपनी फेवर में कंपेरेटिव एडवांटेज क्रिएट कर लेती है अब एनवायरनमेंट भी उसका इतना टर्बुलेंट नहीं रहता कंज्यूमर्स हैव अ ट्रस्ट ऑन दैट कंपनी दीज अ रीच इज बिग कंज्यूमर टेस्ट को इतनी ज्यादा अब आप उसकी एग्जाम्पल हम बात कर रहे थे फास्ट फूड चेन्स की फास्ट फूड चेन में कंज्यूमर का टेस्ट कोई इतना खास चेंज तो नहीं हो रहा फॉर द लास्ट सो मेनी इयर्स इवन इन पाकिस्तान यू आर सीइंग दैट फॉर द लास्ट अबाउट टेन इयर्स वी हैव द ग्लोबल फास्ट फूड चेन इन आर कंट्री एज वेल तो हमने क्या विटनेस की है कंज्यूमर टेस्ट में चेंज हार्डली एनी उन्होंने एक्सपेरिमेंट किए हैं उन्होंने इनोवेट किया है इन आर कंट्रीज दे हैव कम अप विद प्रोडक्ट विच मैच आर लोकल कुजीन हमारे लोगों ने तो कोई नई डिमांड नहीं बिकॉज देयर ब्रांड एक्विटी इज सो लार्ज देयर ब्रांड एक्विटी इज सो मच देयर नेम इज सो फेमिलियर टू पीपल दैट दे हैव हार्डली एनी डिमांड ऑन दैम फूड में आप फास्ट फूड में क्या डिमांड नहीं करेंगे वैसे टेक्नोलॉजी चेंज भी हो जाएगी जो कि चेंज हो रही है तो कस्टमर सर्विसेज बढ़ती जाएंगी इंप्रूव होती जाएंगी बट अ बर्गर और अ स्नैक विल रिमेन अ बर्गर एंड अ स्नैक सो द मार्केट इसी तरह सॉफ्ट ड्रिंक्स जो ह्यूज प्लेयर्स हैं सॉफ्ट ड्रिंक में उनकी मार्केट स्टेबल है बिकॉज ऑफ देयर ब्रांड एक्विटी बिकॉज विच दे हैव क्रिएटेड ओवर ईयर्स ओवर डेकेट्स एंड ओवर देयर प्रसिस्टेंट एनलार्जमेंट इन देयर साइज एंड देयर ग्लोबल रीच दे हैव नॉट रीच्ड अ स्टेज वेयर देयर एनवायरमेंट्स आर स्टेबल कंपेरेटिवली स्टेबल 
کمپیئر ٹو اسمالر آرگنائزیشن اور جو لوگ ان آرگنائزیشنس میں کام کرتے ہیں بڑی آرگنائزیشنس میں دے آر آرگنائزیشنل مین پروفیشنل پیپل دے آر ناٹ انٹرپرینس دے آر آرگنائزیشنل مین ہو آر ہو ورک ود دا سسٹم بیکاز ان لارج کمپنیز یو یوزلی ہیو سسٹمس بیکاز دیر از ورٹیکل ہیرارکی دا ڈیزائن از میکینسٹک سسٹمس آر ڈیولپڈ سسٹمس آر آلسو میکینسٹک اینڈ دے آر ہائیلی ڈیولپڈ سسٹمس سو دا پیپل ورکنگ ان دیز کمپنیز آر آرگنائزیشنل مین آر انڈسٹری پیپل آر دوز پیپل ہو who have a profession to work in industry who a company mein management mein agar hain 10 saal guzare unhone they make a name and then they can go to another company so they are organizational professional people ab let's look at some of the characteristics or some of the advantages which a small organization has over a large organization because we are today talking about size and we are comparing two types of organizations beech mein bahut si obviously in between medium size bhi hai but first let us talk about the two extremes ab jo choti organization hai unme sabse pehla advantage ye hai jaise humne wahan economies of scale dekha yahan par choti organization mein advantage ye hai ki they are more flexible and they are more responsive because they are close to their customers unka to size abhi itna bada nahi hua that they lose the customers behind their systems they are still they don't have much systems abhi us system develop nahi hue itne ya agar unka size chhota hi rehna hai so they don't need really boundary spanning like the big companies they are themselves close to customers unki aapas mein structure hi aisa hai wo mechanistic hai hi nahi wo flat structure organic design hai unki aapas mein frequent meetings hain dialogues hain they share the their views Uh, hardly any boundaries between departments in the choti organizations and they understand their customer more because they are quick to respond agar unhe environment mein koi aur unke environment mein changes hoti bhi hain kyunki wo choti organization hai unka environment turbulent hai badi companies ki tarah stable to nahi to wo apne environment ki changes ko pick kar sakte hain and they can quickly respond pick to badi companies bhi kar leti hain lekin unke response time mein delay aa jata hai because of their size because of the various procedures and vertical hierarchies yahan par wo vertical hierarchies or procedures nahi hote isliye inki response quick hai so the first advantage which they have is the flexibility and their ability to be quickly responsive to what is happening in the environment iske alawa inki reach global to nahi they at the most they have a regional reach which will be confined to an either an area or a city or a district or maybe a country a small country so in ki usually reach regional hai unless until they become network structure organizations phir uh, if they subcontract their functions and they concentrate on their it development and becoming global agar ye nahi ho raha to then their reach will remain regional structure hum pehle hi bayan kar chuke hain these companies will have flatter structures because they do not have any vertical hierarchy they don't have that size which demands vertical hierarchy so structure flat honge formalizations nahi hongi centralization itni nahi hogi hierarchy flatter hogi design organic hoga and the structure itself will be and the arrangements of the organization or the reporting and all the activities of the organizations will be simpler as compared to the complexity which we mentioned in the bigger organizations the market or the environment of small organization is usually a niche market or niche market mein ye hai ki jisse do ya teen companies milke ya ek company initially ek idea ki badolat ek nayi window of opportunity jo create karti hai market mein that is the niche niche mein choti companies kathi rehti ek jaisi the environment is turbulent unless jab wo badi hoti hain to then they form a secure industrial place or an industrial sector aur jo log kaam kar rahe hain in organization mein choti organization mein these people are like entrepreneurs not like the organizational men of large company kyunki ye log ek choti company mein jab kaam kar rahe hain to inko pura mauka hai they get full exposure to get involved in strategic decisions they get involved with top management they discuss things with them 
because structures are flat, there are hard, hardly any hierarchies, so they get exposed to all layers of the management, all types of management and they share the entrepreneurial spirit of the top management because top management in small companies usually and especially in the startups, they have an entrepreneurial spirit because it will be very difficult for them to launch a company. So we can see that smaller organizations have certain advantages like responsiveness and flexibility whereas larger organizations also have certain advantages like their global reach and like their economies of scale. Now we will discuss what are the current trends. Now we will discuss what are the current trends. Currently, what is happening in the topic or debate on size of the companies. That is what we will discuss in the remaining part of this session. Now since mid-60s, if you look at the history, since mid-60s, most of the then existing large businesses have lost market share worldwide. So, ek to humare paas ye fact hai. Ek to humare paas ye empirical research ne hume diya. Ye 30-40 saal ke pichle agar hum dekhte hain history. Jaisa mene pehle bhi arz kiya tha, 50s or 60s mein jo craze tha, bigness ka, it started to die down. And now, most of those companies which were huge joints in 1960s, unko agar hum ab dekhe, to unke market share globally kaafi kam hai. Today, 96% of exporters are small businesses. This reason IT is, or this reason countries ke darmiyan growing cooperation hai, economic fronts pe, ya diminishing uh, barriers to trade hai, international trade. Whatever the reason, the fact is that 96% of the exporters of the world are small businesses. They are not large companies. Internet is a fertile ground for the growth of small companies. This thing we have IT ke revolution mein or IT ki evolution jab hum discuss kar rahe the, we have already talked about it, that because of technology, because of IT and because of internet, companies can be very small. They can have a small head office and they can subcontract their functional services to other companies and through that small head office, they can have a global reach if they know how to use technology. So, they will increase their global reach, that is fine, but their size will remain small. Now, we have seen that the reason why companies are losing their market shares is they, because they are decreasing in size and they are decreasing in size because of IT and also because of growing trend for the service companies to become more important or more prominent than the production companies. So, this rapidly growing service sector is also contributing to a decrease in the size of the company because service companies bohot badi nahi hoti. Like production houses, ab humne aapko jo example bhi di hai fast foods ki ya soft drinks ki. Is mein bhi aap dekhte hai fast food chains mein especially production service dono involved hai. Lekin pure service companies, bank bhi agar hum dekhte hai, the banks mein bhi Somehow it is uh, the, it is now for the last about 10-15 years that banks have really gone global. Otherwise banks be regional the zyada. Ab multinational or global form mein chal rahe Lekin service sector pe jo emphasis hai, wo bhi decrease in size ko encourage karta hai. Most of the service companies are small size companies providing services to their customers and are responsive and flexible because of their small size. Now, percentage of the employees working in large organizations is constantly falling. Now, we are talking about empirical facts because we are not trying to present to you the current trends in terms of size of an organization. So, we have now presented to you another fact that number of people working in large organization is number of people working in a pharmaceutical industry, I will take a specific example from that industry. Because this may throw the ABG is clear ho jayegi. The small companies can also create ripples globally. They can also come up with inventions and breakthroughs, which large companies can't do. And this is the example of pharmaceutical. Example I cannot take the names of the companies, but at least I can tell you what that breakthrough is. In pharmaceutical industry, 
R and D in small organizations generally has been much more effective as compared to the R and D of large pharmaceutical companies. और इसमें जो example मैं आपको specific देना चाह रहा हूँ, वो the deadly disease hepatitis B. इसके against जो vaccine अब available है, वो vaccine आपको याद होगा अगर हम 90s में भी देखें, तो there was hardly any cure or vaccine available for hepatitis B. Cure तो अभी भी नहीं कह सकते, but preventive it is a great preventive measure. So this vaccine is the invention of a small pharmaceutical company, not a large pharmaceutical company. So ये इतनी बड़ी service जो humanity की है, इतनी बड़ी खिदमत जो humanity की है, ये R&D of a small company से आई है, not from a large company. ये जो sector हमारा pharmaceutical है, इसमें smaller companies have actually been very very effective in terms of research and development or pharmaceutical may research and development is the backbone because if R&D is weak in a pharmaceutical company so वहाँ पर आम product भी आप बना रहे हैं consumer के लिए और आपकी R&D weak है तो you will not be able to exactly provide what the customer wants और यहाँ तो हम बात कर रहे हैं medicines यहाँ पर भी हम we are talking about life saving drugs यहाँ पर अगर आपकी R&D weak है and we are talking about the principles of natural sciences. यहाँ पर हम chemistry, physics, biology इन principles की बात कर रहे हैं। इनमें अगर आपकी R&D weak है, तो obviously you will not survive. But smaller companies have done miracles in pharmaceutical industry. Now the personal involvement of employees in small organizations encourages innovation. तो हमने पहले भी देखा, बड़ी organization में जो लोग काम करते हैं हमने उनको लेबल किया एज ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल और ऑर्गेनाइजेशन मैन छोटी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में जो लोग काम कर रहे हैं उनको हमने कहा एंटरप्रेन्योर्स बिकॉज दे आर मोर इन्वॉल्व विद द एक्टिविटीज ऑफ द कंपनी बिकॉज द साइज इज स्मॉल स्ट्रक्चर्स आर फ्लैट पीपल नो इच अदर दे आर एक्सपोज टू मोर स्ट्रेटेजिक चैलेंजेस इसलिए उनमें कमिटमेंट ज्यादा हो जाती और इसी कमिटमेंट की वजह से दे कैन कम अप with new ideas, they can come up with innovative products, they can, they have more motivation, they have more commitment. Badi organization mein jo kaam kar rahe hain log, yeni, I'm not saying that they are not committed or not motivated, their commitment and motivation is to their careers. Here, people have a commitment and motivation not only to their careers, but to their companies because they identify that if this company grows, then I will grow with it. ये चीज creates an extra element of motivation and that little bit of an extra that makes a lot of difference इसलिए जब हम employees की performance या employees की commitment या employees की motivation की बात करते हैं तो वो smaller companies में ज़्यादा है वहाँ पर dynamism employees में ज़्यादा नज़र आती now having discussed all this हमने history भी शुरू में discuss की इस session के about the size of the companies and then we discussed about the advantages and some problems associated with the size and then we have seen current trends and we have seen this right from the comment of Peter Drucker of 1990s and the current trends which we have just analyzed and just discussed they are all telling us that now in the contemporary era Small companies are, I am not saying that small companies are going to be more effective than big companies, but we can hypothesis develop kar sakte hai, at least ye hai, ke the size of companies is generally decreasing. Big companies utni nahi rahi jitni wo 50s, 60s, 70s ya 80s mein thi. Ab ek, otherwise there is no problem, in, in this there is no problem because history kis taraf le ja rahi hai hume we don't know kya technology technology ke breakthrough future mein honge kya managerial techniques mein breakthrough honge future mein we don't know at this point in time but the real problem is saath mein humne ek taraf to ye kaha ki badi companies apna size market share lose kar rahe hain dusri taraf humne dekha ki small companies have the pressure on them to grow fast and when they grow fast they become big now that is a problem. फिर तो वो बात वहीं की वहीं आ गई। इसका मतलब है कि अब at the most ये कह सकते हैं कि अब companies जल्दी grow कर जाती हैं। 
So what do we do about this problem? Because if you are a small company which has a flat structure, horizontal uh, communication, hai, organic design, hai, and over the months, over the years, you grew to structure, uh, to a size which was big, ab wo flat structure samhalna aapke liye asaan nahi raha. Ab wo organic design maintain karna aapke liye liability ban gai. So aapne us size ko manage karne ke liye vertical hierarchy create kar di. Systems ko aur strong kar diya. So aapne apne design ko organic se mechanistic bana diya. Aur ab aap pe sari ki sari wo problems aani shuru ho gai jo bigness ke saath associated. So phir kya kiya jai? That is a problem. Is problem ka solution Jack Welch ne diya tha. And Jack Welch said, he gave a concept. This ko unhone ka, big company, small company, hybrid. He said that, aap ek badi aur choti company ka, ameza, ya hybrid jo hai, us philosophy se chale, which basically meant, the combination or combining of large resources and reach. Dekhe, big companies ke paas kya hai? Reach hai global, aur zyada resources. So unhone ka, fine, if you grow big, then you have at least this advantage that you have large resources and you have a large reach. Unhone ka aap aapni is bigness ke advantage ko match kar dein, mix kar dein, combine kar dein with a small company's simplicity and flexibility. Now that is what created divisional structures. Divisional structures bhi, vaise to divisional structure concept koi 90s ka to nahi hai. Lekin 90s mein ye hona shuru ho gaya tha. Yeah, it is the end pay that divisional structures ko is tere istamal kiya jata tha size ke bada hone ke liye jo disadvantage badi companies ko hota hai ke wo consumer se dure ho jate hain us ko kam kar diya gaya ya aapne apni business ko SBUs mein split kar diya ab wo SBUs jaise hum discuss kar chuke hain divisional structure mein within SBUs wo full fledged company lekin kyunki wo size mein choti is liye it is possible for that SBU to come close to the customers. So that SBU structure will be simple as compared to the parent company. And this simplicity in structure will give that SBU more flexibility, more responsiveness. So that means a big company is now enjoying the two benefits. It has large resources, it has large reach, but it, it also has divided itself up into SBUs which are enjoying the benefit of flexibility and quick response and simplicity. This hybrid which created created bigness ka or largeness ka, this solution present kiya Jack Welch ne to the challenge of uh, or to the problem of small companies growing big. Because successful small companies will probably grow big. And when they grow big and if they are caught in the inertia of bigness, then they will lose that advantage due to which they grew big. Or a decline pe aajayengi. Is liye decline se rokne ke liye. This was thought that they have to use their advantages uh, by combining various advantages of largeness and smallness. Ek aur tarika jo apnaya jata hai to do the same is called the front back approach. Aur isme ye hai ke back departments or back part of the company is meant for production and the front end is meant for distribution. Ye humare yaan koi itna zyada successful nahi hai nekin western countries mein front back approach kafi zyada success bhi mili. So now after seeing all, um, after listening to this discussion on size, we can now say that in contemporary era, in current times, the pressure is not to become big. It is to grow fine, but you can grow and retain the flexibility. If you can become big with the mentality of a small company, then you can still be close to your customer. And the important thing is to get close to your customer and quick and be quick in responding. Agar aap customer ke close hain, if you understand your customer and if you respond to his or her needs quickly, then you are in business no matter what your size is. Then your bigness will not become a disadvantage. And converting from this big company mentality, hai, that is an inertia. This is an inertia in which 
resistance to change is very, very strong. So breaking that mental mold, breaking that mental state of bigness is more important. Once you break that state and you come back on the ground that we are big, fine, but this bigness can create problems for us because it will take us away from customers, then when you have that down-to-earth thinking, to then you are remaining big, but you are thinking now with a small company's mentality. A small company's mentality is to take advantage of the customer demands, to take advantage of the uh, requirements of the customer and to give those requirements to the customer on time and in a manner which pleases the customer. If you are huge, if you are a huge fast food chain, but you respond to customers very quickly, even if those customers are 5,000 miles away from your head office, it's not a global reach, then you are a true contemporary company which has the resources of big company, which has the muscle of a big company, but mind of a small company. Because if your mind is big, uh, stuck ho gaya, then you have problem. Or if you have muscle nahi hai, big company, ka, to phir to obviously you are a small company, hai, then you will be in a niche, then you will, if you survive and if you are successful, then you will grow. And when you will grow, we will reach that bigness, then if you have retained that mentality of small company, to phir aap mein wo flexibility or responsiveness rahegi, jis ki wajah se aap business mein bhi rahenge aur jis ki wajah se aap customers ko bhi delight karte rahenge aur please karte rahenge aur jis ki wajah se aapki brand equity bhi banti rahe. So, in today's discussion, we have discussed size as an important phenomena rather than as a contextual factor alone. Agar hum size ko sirf contextual factor mein dekhe, iske impact kya hai on design of a particular organization, so, actually, we have already seen that when we were discussing the advantages or characteristics of largeness or smallness, we have seen that the large companies will have vertical hierarchies, they will have stable environments, and they will have more formalization, more centralization, more uh, vertical hierarchy. So, their design mechanistic will be the small companies ka design organic. Hoga. So, size plays a role in determining the design of a particular organization, but the concept of size alone, the particular concept of size, jo pehle physical size tha, wo ab kuch badal raha hai. Physical size agar aapka bada bhi hai, that is fine, but if you have the willingness and the desire to be close to your customer and you want to retain the flexibility and you, you want to retain the quick response time to the customer, so then you can split your own, divisional structure, you can make small SPUs, you can use a front-back approach, you can use IT use kar sakte hai, to retain that small company thinking so that you use the both. So size itself does determine the design of an organization along with the technology of that organization, along with the environment of that organization, and along with the strategies and goals and objectives of that organization. So that uh, discussion today has actually uh, completed our discussion on the contextual factors of acting on a particular company and how those contextual factors affect the design of that company. Iske saath saath humne jo structural factor discuss ki hai, those factors we will keep on discussing. Because under different scenarios and different situations, we will keep on seeing formalization kaisi hai, specialization kaisi hai, division of labor ka kya ho raha hai, decision making delegated hai, centralized hai ya decentralized hai, hierarchies vertical hai ya nahi hai, aur horizontal hierarchies hai, to wo kitni in ki breadth hai, complexity kaisi hai, that we will keep on discussing. But contextual ki bhi hum bar bar hamari discussion mein zikar aayega. Lekin alag alag se environment ko, technology ko, size ko hum ab discuss kar chuki hain. And now in our future sessions, we will be using this knowledge base which we have built so far to understand higher concept of organizational theory and design. Because in the coming sessions, 
we will talk about learning organizations we will talk about the culture of organizations uh, affecting the design and the interrelationship between culture and design and we will also talk about the decision making process and the power bases which are developed in the companies and how these strategies and these uh, tactics affect the design of a particular company ye sari cheeze hain jo hum future mein aapke sath discuss karte rahenge lekin ek hamare paas jo बेस एक ग्राउंड वर्क प्रिपेयर हमने करना था उस तमाम फ्यूचर डिस्कशन के लिए दैट विद द ग्रेस ऑफ ऑल माइटी दैट वी हैव अकम्पलिश्ड एंड नाउ वी शुड बी वेरी कंफर्टेबल इन डिस्क्राइबिंग द स्ट्रक्चरल और कंटेक्चुअल वेरिएबल्स इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द डिजाइन और स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ ए कंपनी एंड इट्स इन्वायरमेंट डिजाइन एंड स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ ए कंपनी linked with its technology its size aur ye hamare cheez mein azen mein ye picture ab aa jani chahiye when we listen about a company's products ye company ye bechti ye company dusri b company ye bechti ab wo production mein hai ya service mein hai unka jo product hai wo commodity hai ya wo differentiated product hai that that much information should ignite our mind उसमें वो बर्निंग शुरू हो जानी चाहिए कि ऑल राइट ना दिस कंपनी हैज इज प्रोड्यूसिंग डिफरेंशिएटेड सर्विस तो इस कंपनी का डिजाइन ऑर्गेनिक होगा विद दीज करेक्टरिस्टिक्स वेर एज दिस कंपनी इज प्रोड्यूसिंग स्टैंडर्डाइज प्रोडक्ट इज विद लो कॉस्ट लीडरशिप स्ट्रेटेजी तो इस कंपनी का डिजाइन इन लाइन्स पे होगा तो इफ वी कैन डू दैट देन वी आर इन बिजनेस फॉर आर कोर्स इन ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल थेरी एंड डिजाइन तो टिल नेक्स्ट सेशन आई से Good office thank you very much